Evacuations continue and thousands of Afghanis desperate to leave despite the Taliban's promise of peace, especially following an anti-Taliban protest yesterday that ended in bloodshed. So with me right now to speak more on this is Michael Chong. He's the incumbent MP for Wellington Halton Hills. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to speak with us on the program. I wanted to have you on not only as someone who has served as foreign affairs critic, but as someone who's been in office for the past 17 years. So you've been there pretty much from the very beginning of this conflict. So I wanted to get a sense from you as to what you think went wrong. Well, it's clear that the Western Alliance uh, clearly dropped the ball on Afghanistan. Um, what's happened in Afghanistan is an appalling. It's an appalling betrayal of the people of Afghanistan who put their trust in the security forces provided by NATO uh, to protect their, their rights, to protect their families, to protect their, their livelihoods and their very lives. Uh, and so it's a complete, utter foreign policy failure. And Canada has played a part in that. Um, the Liberal government has dropped the ball as well. Uh, for months, we, for years in fact, we have been calling on the Liberal government to do more uh, to rescue and bring over uh, those Afghans who were instrumental in helping Canadian forces, soldiers in the field during the war in Afghanistan. Uh, these are interpreters, these are uh, people who work closely with our men and women in uniform, um, saving countless Canadian lives by helping them be the eyes and ears um, on the ground in many of the remote regions of Afghanistan. And yet the government, uh, the Liberal government, has completely dropped the ball on this and abandoned these folks in Afghanistan. And now thousands of them uh, are at risk of being killed. This is a ruthless organization that in the past has shown no hesitation in targeting minorities and targeting women uh, and committing some of the most heinous human rights crimes known to us simply for people uh, going about their daily lives, simply for girls going to school, simply for women uh, choosing to uh, govern themselves freely, uh, simply for people uh, speaking up uh, about any uh, range of issues. So uh, we should treat any, uh, any uh, commitments from the Taliban with a great deal of skepticism. Okay, so uh, you say this was a failure of the Western Alliance, Canada, of course, being included in that, and you had your criticisms over how the current government has handled this so far, but this was 20 years in the making, and the Conservative Party had been the governing body in this time period, so really, shouldn't the blame fall to all the governments over this 20-year span in not doing enough to prevent the Taliban regaining control? The war in Afghanistan endured several uh, governments of different stripes, both here in Canada, um, in the United Kingdom, uh, in France, in the United States. And so there's plenty of blame to go around about what went wrong. Um, and so there'll be uh, plenty of opportunity in the coming months, in the coming years, for us to assess uh, why things collapsed so quickly over the last six months and what we could have done better um, in order to prevent this kind of foreign policy failure in the future. But I'll close by saying this. We lost some 159 Canadians in Afghanistan during the war. That number would have been much, much higher, along with much higher rates of casualties, had the local Afghan people that assisted us not provided that assistance. We owe it to them and to uphold Canada's honour and reputation to ensure that they are brought out of harm's way back to Canada um, to repay that debt that we owe them. Okay, so you talk about what to do next in the immediate short term here, but what about the future? What do you see is likely to happen? Should Canada ramp up refugee programs, rescue missions? Hey, do you even see a potential war as things get worse in the weeks, the months, the years to come? Um, in the longer term, I think that we need to make it clear to the Taliban that under that that uh, under no condition will we allow them to be a safe haven for terrorism, for terrorist groups, to launch attacks on Canada uh, and on other Western allies. Um, that I think is the strategic imperative 
that we have. I think the other uh, strategic imperative is to stand up for human rights and the fundamental rights of women, children, and other minorities uh, in Afghanistan and make it clear to the Taliban uh, that we will use all, all means available in order to ensure that they don't cross the line and commit these heinous human rights abuses as they have in the past. 